connection. Good afternoon and welcome to City Speaks. City Speaks is a show for the residents for the city of Dunkirk. Our, it is the opportunity for the residents to know what's happening in City Hall, with the administration, with our elected officials, and to know what's going on. Send your questions, comments, concerns, whatever you have to me, Vicki Wessling, at vwessling at cityofdunkirk.com. Vicki Wessling, City Hall, 342 Central Avenue, Dunkirk, or bring them into City Hall and I'll be happy to get them and answer your questions on air. City Speaks, again, is for you, the residents for the City of Dunkirk. And we have some questions that came in uh, from, last, uh, from the last show and I'm gonna answer those now. The first question came from a gentleman. He's a Vietnam veteran. He rides a scooter. It's a four-wheel scooter and he has the flag and the lights and all of the equipment on it. He rode through Tim Horton's drive-in window and he was told not to do that that it was unsafe and they were not allowed. He asked that I check on that. I did. I spoke with Chief Ortolano. Chief Ortolano said that scooters are, have the same rights as automobiles. They can ride on the street. They must ride on the right-hand side of the street. They need a flag. They need lights. He does not encourage riding before uh, sunup or after dusk. They must obey all the same laws that an automobile would obey. I also spoke with Gina, the owner of Tim Hortons. She advised me that whatever information the gentleman got was incorrect. She welcomes and applauds and is very complimentary of all of our veterans and she thanks them every day for their service. So you're welcome to ride through the drive up window at Tim Hortons if you have a four wheel scooter with the flag on the back because of safety reasons. She asks that you have your lights on if it looks as though it may be dark. Well, however, Chief Ortolano has asked that you not ride the scooter at night. Bicycles and walkers are not allowed at the drive-up window. But again, she thanks the uh, gentleman for his uh, service and for his patronage of Tim Hortons. The other question that we had uh, dealt with a public works uh, issue where a uh, resident at 125 South Martin Street had stumps. The trees had been removed, the stumps were still there. I contacted our DPW director who forwarded the information on to our DPW supervisor, Mike Propiglia. Mike has explained that the stumps will be removed. They're waiting on doing some sidewalk remediation in that area, and so those are going to be removed as well. So, with those questions answered, we're going to start today's show. Today we have our councilman at large, Andy Voeschen and our first ward councilman, Don Williams, Jr. Welcome, guys. Thank you for having Thanks, us, Vicki. So this show is for you because as an elected official, you have a great deal of information to impart to our residents. People want to know what's going on. They want to know what's happening in the city, and they don't always get that when they're sitting at a council meeting. So I'm going to start with uh, you, Councilman Vawashan. You're the chairperson for the city council. You run the meetings. While people have an opportunity to speak, sometimes they don't always do that. But you have a lot of experience. This is your second term on the city council. You also, prior to this, and I guess still, you were the assessor, were you not? For this? Correct. I was clerk of the Board of Assessors uh, for nine years in the city of Dunkirk, which at that time was a, a full-time elected position. So I was elected for nine years uh, to be head of that department as well, from the late 90s to the mid-2000s. Wow, so you've done that, and you also have your own business. You Correct. also do a lot of different things. Correct. And you're also chairperson for our finance committee. Correct. And this time of year, finance is a big thing. <clears throat> We're going into 2019. We're going to look at what's happening. What are your goals for 2019 when it comes to finances? Uh, well, we just received the preliminary audit forms um, and review for the 2017 fiscal year. Um, it's not finalized yet, but it's pr it was a preliminary. Um, meeting that we had with the auditors uh, last week and everything looks positive as far as the finances go for the city of Dunkirk. All three funds for the year finished in a positive fund balance, that is which great. is great news. Yes, um, It just goes to show that our finance individuals, Marsha and Mark and the department heads and the mayor and the council and everybody involved is tightening the reins on the spending. Um, we have a lot of projects going on in the city of Dunkirk. So we have a lot of overlooks that has to be done on all the projects to make sure that spending doesn't get out of, out of hand. And it's just a, a pat on the back to everybody involved in that to, to show at the end of the year on paper and legitimately that 
we have a positive fund balance in all three funds, including water and wastewater, uh, at the end of the year. So we have to take that information, wait till it is finalized, mm -hmm. um, and then we will, we will tweak it to fit the 2019, see what we did wrong out of the 2017 and 2018, see what we did correct, and hopefully we can fix the incorrect things going forward and keep the correct things right. going <laughs> forward. Um, but every, everything's looking very, very good. Very, very when good. you say incorrect and correct, I, you know, coming from, you know, I'm kind of a wordsmith kind of person, so I think of positive versus not positive. <laughs> correct. Yeah, especially <laughs> financially too. Maybe right. we, maybe we were a little bit in the negative on this one, and maybe we underfunded it. You know, that might have been our fault. Right. Um, so, those are the type of things that we look at on. But, an but overall, basis. everything is positive, and that's, and that's great news. And and like you said, that's kudos to our uh, fiscal affairs officer, to our treasurer, and and certainly to <coughs> Mayor Rosas. And when we talk about money coming in, we have a lot of, uh, we've received grants, we've received funding, uh, and that's all a part of what's going on in our development department uh, with Mayor Rosas, with certainly both of you, um, and our other council members, so with the, with the grants that have happening. And you mentioned in a couple of council meetings ago, and I was there, I have to attend them all, you, you uh, talked about all the projects going on in the city. Tell me a little bit about everything that's happening that you know of. This mayor, I have to applaud him and support him when it comes to raising funds for the project. This mayor has brought in literally tens of thousands of dollars in grant money to the city of Dunkirk. Millions for, even. Or I, I'm, that's what I meant, I'm sorry. <laughs> tens, tens of millions of dollars, I'm sorry, not thousands. <laughs> tens of millions of dollars in grants for all these projects across the board throughout the entire city of Dunkirk. And those things that I mentioned at that council meeting, I had a list of probably 12 or 13 items that are of things that are going on in the city of Dunkirk. Um, those are across the gamut as well. They touch on housing, they touch on recreation, they touch on infrastructure, they touch on waterfront, they touch on re you know recreation across the board. So it's not like we're just honing in and fixing one little facet of Dunkirk for these two or three years, and then we're gonna, two year, two or three years down the road, we're gonna fix a different facet of Dunkirk. It's not like that. On a regular basis during all of our meetings, all, especially our committee meetings, we're looking at the entirety of the city of Dunkirk and seeing how we can fix it all together at the same time. So now is this new, this planning process that's going on, because this is your second term. Correct. And uh, hopefully you'll run for a third. Well, we'll see. But, uh, so you've had some experience. Is this a new, uh, procedure, a new process, a new program that goes on where now you actually do sit down and look at a plan overall? Well, I, and again, I can only speak for the two and a half years I've been there. I don't know what the council did prior to that, but I know uh, when we came on as a group two years ago, um, we're all there for one purpose, and that's to better the city of Dunkirk. And I said it two years ago when I was running and when I was asking for the nomination, and I said it again last year when I was running. I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican or conservative or independent. I only care about whether or not you want to improve the city of Dunkirk. And, and if you do, then I'm a champion for you. Um, so in that regard, I think we all work together and we all conversate on a regular basis, whether it be emails or text messages or phone calls outside of City Hall on a regular basis. What did you hear about this? What's going on about that? So the more that we conversate and the more that we find out even the smallest things that might be wrong, we can think of ways as a group going forward. Uh, and, and Councilwoman Shikawa was part of that as well over the last two years. And Councilman Heenan just jumped right in because he has past experience in, in the political arena as well, being councilman at large, uh, being a county legislature, legislator, sorry. Uh, so he's very familiar with how the inner workings work as well. So I think we really worked well together as a group. We don't always agree. Um, and you're never going to have that, you know, even, even who you think you might be, you'd be your best friend or your best cohort on the council, you're going to disagree with. Um, but at the end of the day, that's how you learn things, mm -hmm. is you learn from other people's conversations, you learn from other people's ideas, and your idea might not always be the best. Your idea might not always be the, the, the cheapest or the most economical, and that's why you have those conversations in those that, meetings. That <laughs> is great, you know, and we talk about conversations, and when I think about the different committees we have, the Finance Committee, and of course one of, uh, one of the committees that really deals with the infrastructure that people see the most is the DPW, our Public Works Committee, and that brings us to uh, Councilman Williams, and you're the chairperson for that committee. Yes. So you're really involved with all the things that are happening. Yes, we, uh, we try to look at everything. Uh, right now the committee members also on there are Councilman Bomano and, and Councilman Civiletto, 
and uh, we've had we've had a lot of the other ones show up too. Uh, I think Councilman Washington showed up to a couple, and so has Councilman Heenan. Um, we take the the thoughts that are out there from the community, and we bring them up at the meeting. You know, anything from uh, snow plowing to potholes to to trees, and also with that, I also sit on the the uh, finance committee that Councilman Washington chairs, and. So from that, thinking money-wise of it, I try to take that into the into the DPW committee also. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd like to see us, you know, start to get on a a uh, schedule with maybe the equipment so that we can start replacing equipment as as it ages. I'd also like to see us maybe come up with a program so that um, we can get longer life out of some of the equipment that we have. Uh, we've come up with some different ideas in there and we're looking at things and trying to do that. And um, that that's basically, you know, kind of a lot of what we do. We try to problem solve on, hey, this happened over here. How could we do this? Uh, how did we handle it? And one thing I like to do is I always like to ask, is there a way we could do that better? And you know, sometimes there's not a way we could do it better. And other times, throwing out ideas, there's a way that we could maybe do it better. So it's not, you know, we're not picking. It's just, if you're not always asking yourself, how, how can you do it better, then you're just gonna always right. settle with the same old. So we, sure. that's what we, we try to do while well, we're in and there. And of course, and you work with uh, our DPW director, Randy Woodbury, mm -hmm. he, and he was on the show uh, this past week, and he talked about the 22 different major projects that either have just finished or that are continuing, plus the myriad of other smaller projects that are going on. So you have to be pretty Im intimately involved in all the different aspects of what's happening. And that includes equipment. This mayor has been really focused on trying to make sure that the employees have the best equipment available to work with. Uh, he, we've spent uh, money in the fire departments to improve the fire departments, the, the police department, we're working on the police department. We've done bought some new equipment this past year. Tell us about that. Uh, a couple of years ago, they they came up to us and, and said that they wanted a uh, they could use a milling machine that would help a lot of the different things out. So we had a presentation by a gentleman from the Zipper, and uh, he came in and and he showed us how that machine would work. And uh, that was still back when. Uh, uh, the director was uh, Mr. Bennis, and um, we started looking around, and instead of just running out and buying a brand new piece of machinery, uh, we looked around for things, and I think we found one for about ten thousand dollars. Correct. And went and picked that up, and you know it's done a lot of the streets so far. Now, what does that machine do for individuals such as such as I? The, what, the what zipper, the, the zipper is a milling machine. It's a smaller scale milling machine. So does it grind up the asphalt? Yeah. And they've done they've done whole whole sections of streets, whole blocks with it, where they've they've ground up the the blacktop, and then you know they've uh, graded it around, and then put blacktop on on top of it like uh, that poly polymer the the polymer blacktop that okay. Randy loves so much. <laughs> okay, and now what do they do with the uh, millings once they? Some of them they were using and spreading out, and some of them they were they were loading and taking them away. Okay, so they do try to repurpose some if they possibly can. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's really good. And so now we've also bought uh, we have some new snow plows. Mm -hmm. Were right. those budgeted? Yes, they were. All right. So, we, how many did we get? The you're meaning the three, the the three maroon ones. That, uh -huh, yeah, right. that was before we got in. And uh, those came in, and I think there was three of them, and, Correct. and they're being paid off of the uh, the chips money right oh, now. So okay. I think we have uh, one more year of payments on Correct. those, I think yep. we heard, and that'd be good. That's another thing that I'd like to see between the two committees kind of work on something so that maybe we could plan for and not, uh, if we take it out of our, our chips money, then that's less money that we're able to use on, on actually fixing the streets. I, explain chips. What is the chips money? The chips money is money from the state that we get to help help maintain the the roads that we have. You can use it for black topping, the uh, the flushing, and different things that you could do with it. But then you could also use it for equipment. Okay. And so now, do we have since we're coming up on budget for 2019, have we thought about what the other kinds of equipment we're going to be needing? Are you prepared to separate out the wants from the needs and to 
make a proposal for those, or are you waiting for uh, some more information? Uh, we're waiting for some input. I think I know, like last year, I think we we uh, got a new garbage packer, uh, a lot larger than the ones that we had, and we had that set up to be paid off. I think in three years. Correct. And so, um, so that's that's another good thing. So we need to to be looking at what we need. I think that. Um, I think we got some pretty ancient loaders right now, so uh, hopefully we can start looking to replace place uh, one or more of those. And um, they can always be used too, I think, if we get the loader. I think we might need to look to get a decent plow to go with it so that that can go around the city too and, and give a little help in the wintertime. So is that a part of the long range plan? Yes, yes. So so we will, we will have that done. Let me uh, change, uh, my train of thought here for a minute because I've had people ask me questions. Uh, you know, they'll come up to me and they'll say, by the way, I saw this at the council meeting or by the way, I heard this. One of the things that, ha that happened recently, I believe it was back in one of our May council meetings, was the resolution to change the uh, term limits for our council, for our council, city council. And that really uh, became uh, quite a discussion. We had people uh, from the public there speaking about it. You all spoke about it. And I think that, uh, Councilman Bush, I think that you had the deciding vote to take it public. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what, why, why did you feel, feel this? And why, did you even, why do you even think, either one of you, why do you even think that a four-year term is better than well, a the, two? The, the resolution that we voted on is completely different than if we thought that a four year is better than two. Um, when last year in the election cycle, as I was going out getting petitions, uh, a lot of the doors that I was knocking on to get signatures, they're like, oh, already? You, you just got in there. I said, yeah, it's, it's every two years. And a lot of people were saying, hey, I think you should, you should try to get it out there and get four years instead, because that seems like it's too short for that. So we tossed, I tossed it around and asked some of the other council members and, and asked them what they thought. and. I talked to the city attorney and on how we had to go forward with it. So uh, we decided that we would try to put this up for a, a vote citywide. And um, what what the resolution does is this November on the ballot, there will be a proposition that will say, you know, do you want to? Do you think that the council term should be moved to four years? Uh, me personally. I don't know. I'm probably leaning towards actually voting no on it. But I voted yes on the resolution because I didn't think that just five of us in in the council should de determine on which way that should go. There's a whole city out there, and if they're sick of us knocking on their doors every two years, then you know, then then they can vote in favor of the four years, and then we'll knock on their doors every four years instead. And if they think that it's just fine the way it is, then then they will vote you know, no against the uh, four-year term thing. Again, like I said, I, I'm basically about this being a choice for the city uh, residents and the city voters. So whatever they decide is, is what I'm fine with living with. And like I said, me personally, I'm probably going to vote no against it just because well, um, I see the advantage to two years and, and some well, of the what are so What are the advantages? What do you see as an advantage of two years versus four? The two years you're, you're out and campaigning, you don't get you don't get uh, complacent and sit back and say, oh, "I got a while, I got a while." You know, it, you you got to be out there every other year, showing and saying what you did in the last two years. Okay, and of course, our county legislators uh, are two years. Correct. And they had had attempted some time back to go to four years, and that was and that was voted down. Now, Councilman Bowen, how do you feel about th this? Is the second term for both of you, so correct. Basically, you will be in for four years. So, what do you think? I, re I distinctly remember that meeting that we voted on that proposition on, or that uh, that resolution on, because that was the same meeting that we had the children right. there as well yes. as our as our buddy council right. people or our mayor. buddy mayors right. and, and things like that. And I don't remember the child's name, but one of our honorary mayors for that day actually spoke <coughs> about this and said that you know what, four years is a long time. A lot of things can change in four years. You know, so he that child didn't necessarily think it was a good idea. And, and you are correct, I was a deciding vote. By the time it came time for my vote, it was 2-2. Two, two. Um, to me, personally, elections are for the people, by the people, without citizens, without the public, there's no election. Um, so in that respect, it should be the public's say 
on whether or not you know we're not talking about we're we're not bringing out to the public whether or not you know you, you should vote on buying a another dump truck you know we have insider information because we are council people on the pros and cons of buying another dump truck but the election is about them so they should decide that me personally um, I voted to put this on the ballot um, and let the public decide it even though I'm personally against it so um, I'm not for going to four-year terms um, for some of the reasons that Don mentioned and and one of the other reasons that I mentioned during our meetings as well leading up to it is what if you get somebody in that council that might have a different off color agenda <laughs> that um a radical agenda you never know what you might get nowadays um and then you're stuck with them for four years um so I, and i like Don, don's idea where the two years makes every council people stay mentally and physically invested in what they're doing in city hall for the two years they can't become complacent in the middle two years, in the two in year two or year three, and say, you know what, I don't need to do anything. I can I can float on for two years. Um, so even though I voted for it to go to public, um, I'm against it. And and I and I noticed at the time the Observer uh, editor wrote an article about it as well, mm -hmm. saying that we are being selfish yeah. by <sighs> by voting that way about it. But I find that just the opposite. We're not being selfish. We're asking the public to decide. So I don't know how that could be necessarily selfish, but. Well, you know, and I think that we get a lot of feedback from the public. I really do. Being in the small city that, that we are, uh, the public really is involved. They know what's going on, or they, and they find out what's going on, and they're there on a regular basis. I know they contact all, both of you. They contact me oh, yeah. enough. <laughs> so I know, I know that the public is involved, and they're interested. Right now, the, the big thing, of course, is all that we've done because it's summertime. People are using the beaches. They're using the parks. They're using all of this area. And we have to thank our uh, New York State Senator Kathy Young for the grant that she gave us for Point Gratiot. Uh, we have grants as well as uh, funds that were given to us, sponsorship for the Wright Park. So we have a lot of things happening. One of the things that has come up is how clean or not clean the beaches are. I think they've done a really great job. Um, but I also know that there's some, there again, we have some equipment needs. Where are you with that? Um, <clears throat> beaches, beach access, using beaches has become the thing to do, not only in Chautauqua County. It, it seems like it's a fad, but it's not necessarily a fad going to the beach, but it's become very, very popular again. Uh, all across the United States, uh, across the world, people are using beaches more and more now than they have 10, 10 15 years ago. Um, and we have a lot of beaches in the city of Dunkirk for the small linear space that we have from one uh, city boundary to the other city boundary. A lot of it is beaches. And over the years, um, being familiar with the people in the parks department, I've spoken to them and there's been complaints in the past about the beaches not being cleaned enough and things of that nature. I asked him, I'm like, well, what's the difficult part? He's, and at the time, he said that they, their beach cleaning machine that they had was so small, it would get caught on a rock or, or a branch, and, and the rock or the branch wasn't that big, so then he'd have to stop the machine, get out, unplug it, then start again, and 50 feet later it happens again. Um, so what I asked the council to do during budget hearings last year was to set aside a small amount of money on an annual basis, $7,500, which we're not going to get a beach machine for $7,500. It's going to take years and years of planning and, and saving to get to that point. But since we are promoting our waterfront and spending millions and millions of dollars in promotion and development of our waterfront, we should have a nice waterfront mm -hmm. uh, and beaches are part of that. So uh, the council agreed and, and on an annual basis going forward, we're socking away 7,500 <coughs> bucks a year uh, to put towards a bigger and better beach machine in the future. Oh, yeah. well that's great. So then that goes back to the kind of planning that you're doing, the kind of things that are happening uh, in advance, the things that we know that's coming down the pike, but we can't really afford them today, but maybe Correct. if we save, we can afford them, uh, we can afford them later, which goes to some of the things that you were talking about as far as the equipment, as far as things mm -hmm. that are that are needed. The other thing that's, that's going on in our city, in addition to the grants, in addition to all the activity that's happening on the infrastructure area and the way that the finance, finances are being managed and handled and made sure that we've got everything right, because we do have a responsibility to our residents, we have so much going on. Our next week's show, we have the uh, Great Lakes Grand Prix Offshore Racing, yep. which is going to be phenomenal. These are things that are bringing people into our area. Our infrastructure, is it going to be able to handle all that? I hope so. It should be. 
<laughs> have, have you have you had any involvement with our uh, Grand Prix Rose Grand Prix? I, I went to a group. couple of the meetings to hear about it, if if that's involvement. But yeah, I, okay. I've been listening and paying attention to what's going on. Right, and and of course the, that is all happening through uh, donations, Correct. through sponsorship. And when people look at this and they say this has got to cost us a bunch of money, it really is not. It's being taken care of the same exact way that the air show was taken care of the last right. two years. Um, it didn't come from s the general fund. You know, none of it was paid for through the general fund and taxpayer right. dollars. It was all through donations or bed tax money. Mm -hmm. um, this boat show is supposed, it's supposed to have 600 beds rented mm -hmm. um, for the duration of the event. Well, that's what bed tax money is. It's yep. supposed to be used for that particular purpose, tourist drawing events. Um, so the mayor went to uh, the, the county legislator commi legislator committee that oversees that and asked for some money for sponsorships. There's corporate sponsorships. And that's another thing I got to give props to during this administration is we've lost some major, major, major corporate sponsors in the city of Dunkirk over the last few years. NRG is no longer in operation and they were a major corporate sponsor for a lot of things that we did. And I'm not just talking one or two thousand dollars. You know, mm -hmm. I'm talking five, right. ten, fifteen, twenty thousand um, dollars. Cliff Star is no longer locally owned. Um, so they might not have a vested interest in sponsoring a lot of things anymore. So we lost a lot of sponsorship money there. Um, Red Wing Red Carriage Wing. House right. is no longer uh, in the community. That used to be a major sponsorship. And again, five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars for events. So in order to have these type of events, whether it be the air show or the boat show, um, is amazing that we can still have that much sponsorship money raised on an annual basis for these style events and I have to give I have to give kudos to Rebecca Yannis's development department for finding those sponsors to come up with that. Well yes and, and Rebecca and of course our special events coordinator Hector Rosas who just really works around the clock. People, I'm, I don't think people understand all that goes on with the sponsorships and then of course the grants and the mayor's uh, very much in, involved in those as well. These are things that are happening in our city that is just, just to me, just boggles the mind because people don't realize where everything is coming from. Another thing that's happening in the city, and, and you may know a little bit about this, is the Stell Project. I had someone ask me again this past week about the Stell Project. What's happening there? What does that mean? Can you tell me a little bit about that? I used to work for Stell. Um, Stell stands for Southern Tier Environments for Living. It's located, the corporate headquarters are located at the old Cardinal Manzani. Uh, rectory building and they own the the old Cardinal Manzani school right next door um, and I used to be employed by Stell up until a couple of years ago. Um, the housing project that's going on now in the city of Dunkirk they have funded on their own not necessarily Stell bank account funding mm -hmm. um, but they have found their own funds for it um, and they own the project as well so it has nothing to do with the city it, again, it's not city grants, it's not city taxpayer money, it's not general fund money, uh, it's not owned by the city of Dunkirk, it's not Dunkirk Housing Authority projects, um, things of that nature. There's a lot of misconstrued, I, I just answered somebody yesterday uh, on social media that thought it was the city that was doing all the tearing down. It's a privately funded and privately owned project. And uh, they concentrated on low income areas entering the city. Uh, they had a couple when, when at the inception of the project, they were looking at either Route 5 coming into the city uh, between the railroad berm and the waterfront uh, for houses to rehab or they wanted the Main Street section. So they had to go where they had the capability of getting the highest density and participants because they had to buy all the houses. Mm -hmm. they, they had to buy the houses. So they had to find 30 houses to buy in a small local area. So maybe they couldn't find them along Route 5 between that area, so they had to move to a different area. But it's going to improve um, the visual concept of the city of Dunkirk quite a bit, especially since that th that's the main entrance to the city of Dunkirk uh, from people coming off the thruway or down Route 60. So they're gonna be beautiful houses. Uh, and, it, and again, it's right along the main entrance to the city and, it, and it's gonna benefit the city in that respect. It's gonna make it look really, really nice. And the big thing about that is is that, uh, that it is not taxpayer money, it is not city involvement, it's totally Stell. It's totally Stell, and it's a rent-to-own project as too, which is w something else that I think that is getting lost out there as well. It's not just rental housing. Right. Um, there's en encouragement for these individuals to purchase the homes after they rent so long. 
So these individuals have to take classes on home ownership. They have to take classes on how to maintain their house. They have to take classes uh, on on mortgages. They have to, you know, and all those different style of things. These aren't just rental apartments. That is great. And then, of course, we, we've got to wrap it up here very quickly, but we've got this brownfield project that's going on. The old Edgewood warehouse is coming down. Mm -hmm. We're going to have cold storage there, which is going to create jobs. Yes. So that's another DPW project that's happening. How involved have you been in that? Um, we've been we've been watching that since since it was coming in. It was going to have a few different sites and everything, and uh, the the cleanup of that site is going to be huge. And to have to have that cold storage warehouse there is going to be absolutely amazing, especially for that area. And of course, with Philbrook Foods, it's going to add employees yes. there. Well, this is going to wrap up our show for City Speaks. I want to thank the two of you for being here. It's been very informative. We could go on for another 30 minutes. Our next show is going to feature uh, our Grand Prix Offshore Boat Racing Group. And they're going to talk about the uh, boat race that's coming up on August 17th through the 19th. We'll have Mayor Rosas, we'll have Hector Rosas, and we'll have the four principals from the uh, Great Lakes Grand Prix Offshore Boat Racing. So I hope you join me. Let me know what's going on. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. If you have any more questions for Councilman Vawashin or Councilman Williams, send them to me. We'll get them answered, and we're going to have you back. So thank you. Thank All you right, both. Thank you. Thank you. Vicky. Thank you. Thank you.